Our communion message this morning is in Galatians chapter 2, and we're going to deal with just one verse, verse 16. While you're turning there, if anyone does not have a Bible, there are men who will come forward, and who have come forward, and uh, uh, just raise your hand as they come down the aisle, and uh, they will put a Bible in your hands. So, so please pray with me. Father, we thank you that you would send your son to die on behalf of sinners that you chose to save. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for the gospel. We thank you for the faith that only you could give. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So before we read our passage this morning, I want to put uh, in context this section of scripture. Paul is addressing Peter, who had withdrawn from Gentile believers and was fellowshipping with Judaizers. Judaizers held the position that in order for a Christian to be truly right with God, he must conform to Mosaic law. Peter was giving the appearance that he supported Judaizer doctrine, which was creating many questions for Paul, Paul's teaching, especially the doctrine of salvation by grace alone through faith alone. So let's, let's uh, back up to verse 11 for context to this passage. We'll read uh, verse 11 down through 15 and then go on to 16. But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For prior to the coming of some men from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he began to withdraw and separate himself, fearing those from the circumcision. The rest of the Jews joined him in hypocrisy, with the result that even Barnabas carried, was carried away by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas in the presence of all, if you, being a Jew, live like the Gentiles and not like the Jews, how is it that you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? We are Jews by nature and not sinners from the Gentiles. And then our passage for today, for today verse 16, nevertheless, knowing that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, since by works of the law, no flesh will be justified. So it's critical for us to understand what saving or justifying faith is. Jesus warned in Matthew 7 that on the last day, some will believe that they were servants of Christ, but in fact will be cast out of the kingdom because they never actually believed in him and never did his will. We do not want to be numbered among the self-deceived. Knowing what saving or justifying faith looks like will help us will help keep us from making a false profession in trusting in our Savior. If you miss what it means to be justified and if you miss that tr true faith is in Christ alone, you may miss eternal life. It is a matter of life and death. It is a matter of where you spend eternity. There is a quote that says, what a heartbreak it will be to live an almost Christian life and then almost get to heaven. So the question is, on what basis is humanity declared righteous before God? Is it by faith alone or is it by faith plus works of the law? The teaching of justification that we are declared righteous by God on the basis of faith our faith alone and not by works is a key biblical doctrine. The Greek word for justified describes a judge declaring an accused person not guilty and therefore innocent before the law. 
according to the Bible, being justified refers to God declaring a sinner not guilty and fully righteous before him. God is able to do this by imputing to man the righteousness of Christ and imputing man's sin to his sinless son for punishment. Another author uses this definition. Justification is God's righteous act of removing the condemnation, removing the guilt, and removing the penalty of sin by grace, while at the same time declaring the ungodly to be righteous through faith in Christ's atoning sacrifice. So let's read with, read with me again verse 16. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus, even we have believed in Christ Jesus, so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, since by the works of the law no flesh may be justified. Paul is declaring three times in this verse that salvation is only through faith in Christ and not by works of the law. God's word teaches that we are not saved by works, but by God's grace through his gift of faith. Ephesians 2, 2 uh, verses 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Paul also tells us in Romans 3, 28, For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. The doctrine of justification by faith alone, apart from works, is based on the biblical teaching that states that at some point in time, God declares ungodly sinners righteous by imputing Christ's righteousness to them. This is an, this is an astounding truth and should melt every believer's heart. God justifies apart from works and before the individual becomes righteous. Righteous works are, re are the result and evidence of a born-again person who has been justified by God and is being regenerated by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why use this passage to remember Jesus? Because God were, God's word says that our days are numbered. God has determined when our last breath will be. And only those who believe and put their faith in Christ alone will enter into heaven. Having faith in Christ means that you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And you acknowledge that you could do nothing to save yourself. As believers, we put our lives in his hands and we follow him no matter what the cost. I'm sure in everyone in this room who is a believer knows friends, neighbors, and loved ones who claim to believe in Jesus and are even confident that they are saved. But their, their life remains unchanged. There is no fruit in keeping with their repentance. This is not saving faith. Salvation is not a process. It happens in an instant when someone repents and believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're here today and by your own admission, you would say that you do not know Jesus or you aren't sure if you're you have a true relationship with him. We would love to answer any questions that you may have about saving faith in Christ. Please do not leave here today without talking with an elder about what it means to be justified by faith in Christ. However, when the bread and the juice are presented to you, please allow them to pass you by Communion is for those who have received Christ by grace, by grace alone, through faith alone. Men, please come and serve us.
Believers, as you prepare your hearts, meditate on the grace of God and confess your sins to him. When your heart is ready, you may take communion on your own, and I'll be back in a few minutes to close this, this portion of our uh, service in prayer.